Hi there, this is Panic of Photomon Synthesizers. In this video of our series, I will use the Eurex setup that we built together and integrate it into my studio setup. I will show you how I would sync it to other gear like the Electron Octatrack, the Joe Mox Drum Machine or the Mox Up Harmonicon, how I would connect it to possible effect pedals and how I would record it into my DAW. So, let's get started! First off, we need to decide what device will send out the master clock to all the other devices. This depends of course on what gear you have at your studio and which instruments you prioritize the most to make music, so this might be different with your setup. I will usually go with the Octatrack or my modular system for that job. It could of course also be your DAW, but I myself usually play without a laptop. One thing you should consider here is to send as many clocks directly from the source as possible and to avoid chaining the signal, so you won't have too much delay when the analog clock or a MIDI signal arrives at the end of the device chain. Let's start with the ground control module and see how we could use this one as our master clock device. One of the reasons I like it so much is its flexibility as an interface. You have different options here in terms of synchronization, as it has USB, MIDI and also analog clock ins and outs. First we will use the analog master clock out and directly patch it into our MALT module, so we have some copies of it available to distribute it in our Eurex system wherever we need it. By default the division of the clock output is set to 16th notes, but you can change it in the menu if you want to. From the MALT we will now patch the clock signal into the Bitbox Micro module by 1010 Music. We will need to configure one of these input jacks to receive and read the clock signal, so it then automatically syncs the module to the master clock. If the signal sounds that we load it into the sampler then respond to the master clock still depends on the settings of the individual pads. You can sync them, but you can also let them play at their original speed if you like. Let's include the Octatrack from Electron to our system, which I mostly use to play back pre-recorded melodies or rhythms. This is handy especially for live shows, when I want to keep my setup as small as possible, but still want to have all the sounds at hand that I need for my compositions without carrying my whole studio with me. We will connect it with the MIDI out jack from the ground control module, which is a 3.5mm TRSB MIDI jack. You will need this adapter, which is included when you buy the module, and then connect your MIDI cable to the adapter. And from there you can plug it into the MIDI in jack of the Octatrack. For this configuration you won't need to set up anything on the ground control and the setup on the Octatrack is quite simple. You will need to click the project button, navigate with the arrow buttons to the MIDI menu on the left side of the screen, then go to sync on the right side of the screen and then click the yes button. Here you will have to activate transport receive and clock receive and you're done. Now when we press play, stop or change the tempo on the ground control module, the Octatrack will run along and automatically synchronize itself to it. Now I would like to welcome my Jomox drum machine to the setup. You should hear its kick drum on a big PA, just amazing. For this we will use the MIDI through jack of the Octatrack, which outputs an exact copy of what is sent to the MIDI in jack of the Octatrack and then connect it to the MIDI in jack of the Jomox. On the Jomox itself you will need to press shift and then clock select. With the tempo data knob on the right you can now select between internal and MIDI clock and we'll choose the latter for our purposes and then press enter. That's it! We can now press play again on the ground control module and see how our devices start playing together. Next off I'd like to synchronize the subharmonicon for Moog to play some additional melodies. We could sync it quite simply by patching the clock signal from the MALT module into the clock in jack on the subharmonicon, but I'd like to show you what you need to do when you would like to sync it via MIDI. For this one we'll take the MIDI out from the Octatrack as it's nearer to the source clock than the Jomox and then connect it with an adapter to the MIDI in jack on the subharmonicon. But when I press play on the ground control now you'll notice that the subharmonicon won't start playing. That's because we used the MIDI out on the Octatrack and didn't configure it yet. So we'll again press project and navigate to the MIDI and then to the sync page, where we will also activate transport send and clock send. When we now press play on the ground control, the subharmonicon starts running as well, as all the other devices do. 
As I use the OP1 regularly, I would like to show you how you could integrate it into your setup as well. To synchronize the OP1 with all the other gear, we would need to make it the master clock. Connect the USB out to the USB jack on the ground control, and that's already all you have to do. And you can charge the OP1 at the same time. It's a nice side effect, especially when playing live. In this setup with the ground control as our master clock source, we actually don't really need the Dupfer interface module. But you could still use it to convert the signal from any MIDI keyboard to CV gate and then patch it to the modules you want for example. I'm really having fun syncing all those instruments to each other, but I'm running out of space on my table so let's get to the effect pedals now. When I connect external effects to my setup, I usually plug them directly to the main output of my device of choice or I use an aux send of my Eurorack or my external Soundcraft mixer. If I want to use the effect on one device only, like for example the subharmonicon, then I would connect the output of the subharmonicon directly to the effects device, where I adjust the dry-wet ratio to my liking and then send the signal to my Soundcraft mixer. If I want to use an effect pedal on more than one device like the subharmonicon and the digitone for example, then I would use the aux send of the Soundcraft mixer to send those selected instruments to the effect of my liking and then plug the output of the effect pedal back into my mixer again. The same applies to the Eurek mixer. If you don't want to add an effect to the whole system, you can use the aux send and only send selected channels of that mixer to the external effect of choice. From there you can then plug it straight into the Soundcraft mixer and adjust the overall volume there. To get my audio signals into my computer, I simply record the main audio output of my Soundcraft mixer into Ableton and go from there. Depending on what I'm working on, I would record every single sound one after another into my DAW and then start editing it there, or I would record the whole mix of my setup to then archive it as a whole track. For that purpose I would usually record several takes of it, just to be sure that I have recorded a version I like before unplugging everything again. So I hope you liked this video and that you could take something away from it. If you have any more questions, tips or recommendations, please leave a comment below, I would love to hear from you. Bye!